what's up everybody this video is not going to be very technical because I just want to give you some advice that I think needs to be given to people who want to learn you know if you want to learn certain things uh, by yourself um, I'm gonna give you the following advice but first let me tell you what this is because I'm gonna use this in order to give you my advice this is a diagram of subtasks that I have subtasks of a larger task that I have to do uh, for one of my software projects right so you could consider the large sheet of paper to represent a single large task which is something like create a new domain entity and a web service and then modify the UI to show the thing that gets calculated by this new entity or something like that. The details are not important. What's important is that I have created a diagram of my activities. I do this, by the way, because it helps me know the, the order of the things I have to do, where to start, the kind of day or couple of days I'm going to have. Um, it gives me an idea of the kind of people I'm going to need to talk to because if I have to debug the network, I'm probably going to end up talking to somebody, you know, over at IT or whatever. And I also sometimes give this type of things to uh, junior developers or trainees or whatever you call them, you know, people who are new and don't have any kind of method or you know order to their things and they don't they're not really sure where to start so i give them something like this right right now this is for me and i'm the only one working on this larger task so i just order things in a way that suits my needs right so i have obvious stuff like you know i have to launch the cms and then add the examples and so on and so forth. These four tasks here could be done in parallel, but it's only me. So I'm just assigning some arbitrary order to them so I can move on with my day. Now, this diagram is a visual representation of something that can be uh, done more technically, uh, more mathematically. And that's the idea of, uh, of an order. So, this is the point of this video there is a mathematical theory of order of ordering and learning about that and becoming familiar with the terms and with the structures pre-orders partial orders and all of that uh, with all that language will help you then make sense of a lot of what you will see being described way more generically and abstract in category theory books okay so let me give you an example i have this diagram here and this is some some sort of pseudo english right but i could have a translation a translation to spanish and this is me grabbing each object and and assigning it to another object in spanish but maintaining the arrows so preserving the order that's kind of like a fun functorial transformation right if this was a category and this was a category this would be like a functorial transformation well you can learn about that studying orders before category theory you know you have things like monotonic functions and, and whatnot and you also have now uh, this is just another transformation you know another possible transformation is to get rid of the text and turn each text to a little dot, but still preserving the arrows, right? And if you study or orders, you will study things like, you know, transitivity, you know, does having an arrow here and an arrow here means that we have implicitly an arrow from here to here. Uh, you study all of that stuff when you study orders mathematically, you know, pre-orders, partial orders, and all of that. And you start to become familiar with reflexivity, transitivity, and properties, mathematical properties. Because in the end, the only the, the whole point of studying category theory is to learn how to talk 
in that language of mathematical properties in order to specify stuff that we know how how we can then compose with other stuff because we know what laws are being satisfied and all of that okay but if you start with a category book you know or some category tutorial sure you will you know you will get told the definitions for categories for functor for natural transformations and all of that stuff but it's completely meaningless to you if you don't have any experience working with you know modeling stuff with one of at least with you know partial orders or something and when you study partial orders this is another transformation so i grab and i merge each each two objects because let's say that the tasks were too granular and I'm like, okay, let me merge them tasks. You know, these four tasks, each one takes 20 seconds. So let's just make, let me create a single task, you know, of a minute or something, uh, but still preserving the order. So you learn about this stuff and you also learn about, you know, names for, for example, the object that's the lowest, the object that's the highest, that has a name in, in the theory of orders and you learn about you know maybe not having your order be this neat sequence but maybe you have a couple of two objects that have no connections or are connected be, um, between each other you have arrows going both ways all of that stuff you can start learning it if you start learning uh, orders mathematically if you do this you will then be in much uh robust much more robust ground uh, for starting with category theory okay so i'm gonna link you to the wikipedia article for partial order and you can start there and the important part is that you can just begin informally just like i i did here so you can start making diagrams of stuff and you have orders everywhere Everything you do has an order. Every data structure, every software component, every task you have, every team, every organization, everything has an order. Order is the most fundamental uh, thing in everything you do in information technology. So order is not just this happens before this. That's one order. But if we're talking about, if we were talking about numbers, we could have something like less than or this number divides this number or this person is this person's parent or you know you can you have orders everywhere so start noticing orders make your little diagrams make uh, learn about the technical uh, terms that describe each type you know the different types of orders and learn about galois connections and all of that stuff before you even start uh you know, learning about category theory, and it will help you a lot. Uh, anyway, that's the advice I want to give you. So thank you for watching.